Alright guys, Touch Crabber here and today, I hope you're all doing well and enjoying your day so far and many interesting topics to run through today. Octane supposedly reaching out to the league to try and co-stream the World Championship, not necessarily having the response that he wanted, but also RCT is maybe quite lucky to be competing at the World Championship at all. And tweet your thoughts in the comment section below, like if you guys enjoyed the video, subscribe if you are new as always, I greatly appreciate it. I really upset the channel, thank you very much indeed for doing that. First of all, this one's Kevy Skills, thought it was kind of funny, the yearly Call of Duty cycle is in full swing as it tends to be this type of year. Love the new card, enjoy playing it for a while, hate the game, miss the old games, go crazy over the new COD links, and of course, well, the reveal is happening in just a couple of days' time, actually, on August the 19th, before it all kicks off, so, personally, a big fan of World War 2 games, says Slasher, of course, um, well, he was pretty damn good at the Sledgehammer game before in World War 2, pretty sure he held the kill record in that game with, like, 60, pretty sure he got, was it, like, would 58, did 58 break it from TJ at the end, like, I forget exactly how many Slasher got, but it was certainly on, um, London Knox Hardpoint, and the game was, like, 250 to 130 or something, and Slasher dropped, like, almost 60 kills, with the, with the STG. Thought it was absolutely outrageous. But um, yeah, Sasha was pretty good in that game. Maybe that'll be the case this time around as well. Who knows what team he'll be on though, because there's been a lot of talk. Octane, maybe 100 Thieves or Los Angeles Thieves. Where does Sasha go? Does he stay there? Do they team up together? Um, yeah, many questions to be answered in the roster mania period following the season. The big red button is going to be your best friend for that one, no doubt about it. This is kind of funny from Crim6 as well, right? Because there was the teaser that came out, right? And it's obviously happening in just a couple of days at this point. Crim6, um, well, I'm looking at some of these images right here and thinking, wow, well, that actually could be myself within the game and say, yeah, Codling says you are indeed that guy, pal. So yeah, Crim6 has got his appearance in Call of Duty Vanguard. Maybe um, it's going to mean that even if he doesn't win this year's World Championship, he's going, oh, well, he's going to win next year's, no doubt about that one. Thanks to a sad phase fan on Twitter for pointing this out to me, though. Thought this is actually really interesting because we've heard a few days ago what other players might have been testing positive and um, were in a bit of a precarious position. So Optic Chicago, as we looked at earlier today, they seem to be all good and ready to go here for the World Championship. Where there, there were some other players the likes of Methods, the likes of Temp that we heard about um, potentially getting ill. And also there's a, well, Formal was saying not too long ago now on the Optic podcast that there was like three teams that were affected by this up to something like eight players. And um, well, obviously things seem to be kept a bit of a secret behind the scenes. But RCT says right here in the Twitch chat, like, uh, well, the question comes in. Did anybody on your team get the virus? Yeah, I got it, says RCT right here. So I imagine just after this stage five major, which would have made most sense, because if he had it before then, then he probably wouldn't be able to play at the major or anything. So I guess he got it at a similar time to some of these other players and um, also I guess hoping you know to test negative behind the scenes even though we didn't hear about any of this from the public facing side where um, you know we did with the optic guys which is kind of like how things go between these organizations but um he says that as he continues, but I'm negative now. So things that seem to be okay. I mean, some of these replies here that you see, you're like, honestly, you can't make this stuff up. But um, yeah, so, but I'm negative now, it seems, RCT, so everything is going to be okay. As he continues with, I've been sick, so it's impossible to do anything but scrim. So um, I guess that's pretty good if you're a FaZe fan, right? The fact that RCT was ill with, uh, with the virus means that he actually couldn't do anything else if he wanted to. So he just had to sit at home all day and scrim. And um, maybe the Optic guys felt something similar, right? In the fact that, yeah, maybe they might have been stressed about the situation, but um, maybe they put a lot more time into scrimming because there's not really anything else to do when you've got to sit at home anyway. So, um, yeah, Asti's obviously, it seems to be everything okay and ready to go again. And as he says, right, did to finish it off, yeah, I'm feeling great now. So everything, he was positive, now he's negative, feeling great, getting out to the World Championship and, um, well, should be okay for all these squads. But yeah, Asti's maybe recovering just in the nick of time here to, well, give himself a good opportunity in the phase, guys, to not have to play with anyone because that's the last thing he wants after playing all season to um, end up getting the thing and to have a difficult time at champs when you've, you know, this is the big one, right? We don't want any asterisks on the champs either. Right. We don't want like um, some team to win. Let's say like some have something happens a phase. One of their players has to have you know, forced out of the team because they pot test positive. Then um, and some other team comes in and wins. Then for many seasons to come, there's always that asterisk hanging over the event. That okay, yeah, well that was that strange event where Sim got tested positive or something, and um, and therefore like phase weren't as good as they could have been. So we're just hoping for fair competition at the end of the day. But I did want to talk about this as well from Octane. So this came out from his stream last night. He turns on his stream every so often, like once every couple of months or so. And um, well, he attempted to ask permission from the CDL whether he could co-stream the World Championship. Now, um, they said yes to him, as we'll look at in this clip for a second, if he wanted to stream it on YouTube, but uh, they said no to Twitch, which is, of course, completely expected right at the end of the day. They have the YouTube partnership, but um, I'm pretty sure Octane wanted to do it on Twitch if he could do, because, you know, he's partnered over there. He doesn't necessarily want to go and stream on YouTube, even though he does a lot of great YouTube content over on the YouTube channel itself. Doesn't necessarily want to stream on there, prefer to stream it on Twitch. They kind of said no to that. But interestingly, the follow-up that he gets when he kind of reached out again, and actually someone came back to him from maybe the CDL and Activision side and said, yeah, I kind of wish you could do it on Twitch and uh, maybe implying that that's something which could be possible in the near future. I don't know what you're on, brother. Guys, listen to this. I tried to co-stream champs. I like reached out to people to ask if I could co-stream champs. 
and I can do it on YouTube. And I said, can I do it on Twitch? And the response was, absolutely not. <laughs> so that's pretty cool. Oh, Chad, so I, I asked if I could co-stream, right? For those of you guys that were here earlier, I asked if I could co-stream champs. And I got told, no, I need to do it on YouTube. And then the response that I just got is, I wish it could be on Twitch, though. So as Octane says, can't wait to watch champs this weekend. Of course, I, well, he's not going to be making it, unfortunately, out to that event, but could do some good content around it. And a co-stream would be kind of interesting. Some of these other teams have done that, right? I'm pretty sure Seattle Surge started doing a co-stream towards the latter half of the season on YouTube. Minnesota Rocker have done something like this as well. I know that Zuma does, like, the watch parties. So he'll, he'll bring up, like, a, what is it? He'll bring up the mini-map. He'll bring up, like, a, the kill feed and stuff. Don't really see too much else on the screen, because otherwise you're kind of, uh, well, the YouTube deal, I suppose, wouldn't be too happy with that. But, um, yeah, so that's kind of what Zuma does over there. So he does like a Twitch watch party, but not like an actual co-stream. And co-streaming is something which I think has so much potential for not just esports in general, as we've already seen with other games, but uh, well, Call of Duty specifically, right, in future years, because there's so many massive streamers that um, even if they're not quite playing Warzone now, when the new game drops and the new map comes out for Warzone, and especially if there's anti jeets they'll certainly be back in force. That could be a perfect opportunity to coincide that with some co-streaming being allowed. Now, um, of course, a lot of these streamers are on Twitch, right, under Understandably so, they have the likes of courage and uh, you know Dr. Disrespect and stuff are on YouTube. So maybe there's some deals to be made over there if this uh, if this uh, well arrangement still lasts into future seasons. But uh, with any luck, this kind of uh, whatever deal they right now have with YouTube, maybe it comes to an end and we move to a situation where Twitch co-streams are actually a possibility. And uh, the likes of Octane or whatever other players don't happen to make the World Championship can potentially go down that route. So it seems like he got permission to kind of do it, but uh, whether he will do it on YouTube uh, remains to be seen. But obviously they're not kind of going to allow him to do it on Twitch. But just that kind of tidbit that um, someone maybe was saying to him, yeah, I kind of wish it was allowed to be done on Twitch, is that maybe implying that uh, it wouldn't be too far around the corner. That might indeed be the case. Wanted to talk about this as well from the COD Vanguard perspective. I thought this is pretty interesting for Marksman, lining out exactly what he needs in Call of Duty Vanguard from his perspective. A streamer mode, so I guess that's kind of like if you're playing the game, they can't see your name in the, um, in the kill feed and stuff, so you can't get stream sniped. And anti-cheat, of course. Skill-based matchmaking gone or turned down a fair bit. Team balancing removed, have random teams. That'd be kind of an interesting idea, because um, that's a bit of thing you've got for quite a while now. 12 plus unique good maps. Apparently that's at least well, hopefully going to be the case. We're going to have some well, yeah, it's 12 plus maps in the game where they're all going to be good. That remains to be seen. Don't be historically accurate. It's boring but um, yeah, I don't really care about that as long as it's a good game. But uh, yeah, some time to kill stuff. Footsteps I think is pretty interesting because I definitely prefer footsteps to be quiet. The, the such annoying thing about Modern Warfare Surge is that you have to pop dead silence to get anywhere. I do wish that you could run around the map freely. At least walk around the map. Like walking should at the very least be quiet. Like fully quiet. And um, like running kind of okay i understand if you, if you want to go really quick maybe it should give some sort of sound cue if someone's close enough to hear it but um yeah pretty frustrating and as he continues with i'm disgusted at how many people think quiet first steps are bad you kids are used to hiding in corners and turning your head to up wonder warfare 2 black ops 2 considered the best games that the franchise ever produced and they both have quiet first step audio and as exclusive ace says here in reply 100 percent agree for cod multiplayer sitting still and waiting to hear footsteps is not a skill learning roots spawns power positions and how to probably read a mini map on the fly are all skills that take time and experience to master. That is what sets actual good players apart from the rest. So, would like to see some quieter footsteps. This I thought was interesting that Mozzie pointed out, so a lot of her very topics in this video. But as you can see on Aqua's stream right here, professional cop player, currently a free agent. So, don't know how long this has been his thing. Maybe he's had this thing for absolutely ever. But um, you'd imagine he wouldn't have had this bio if he was last live three weeks ago. So, maybe Aqua's taken this out. Possible that Paris Legion have released him already. I'm sure that these teams that are at the bottom of the league that aren't making the World Championship are already considering options and making moves for the coming off season and um, maybe ejecting their entire squad might be what happens here and maybe Aqua has been the first victim of that but of course no confirmations to come out as of yet wanted to finish off with some nice uh, Lion Man cards of course we got the RC's one given we mentioned him earlier I thought I'd put him on the screen for you guys to enjoy these are um, well Lion Man's effectively done the cards for the entire season that they've played so far so stage one all the way through to stage five for every single player in the league playing at the world championship and um, we get this one as well from Selium like his snaps are absolutely insane to be honest stage four he had a 96 overall even in stage five where they went 4 and 3 overall, still the 1.52 in control. So, definitely a scary team going into champs, no doubt about that one. This I thought was pretty incredible from Attach, actually. The entire season, he was between a 74 and a 77 overall. Pretty consistently mediocre performances. But stage 5, he was out of control. Gets a 93 overall, a 1.32 in surge. Great across all the game modes. And, um, well, that's really what it took for Minnesota Rocket to get over line. Can they do so again? That, of course, remains to be seen. And, uh, well, with the World Championship just around the corner, and also World War II Vanguard or whatever it's going to be called on the 
the horizon. Wanted to bring up this clip again for the 2018 COD Champs when Kenny went absolutely insane and uh, finished the map with 41 kills to force a decider here between FaZe and Team Caliber in the lower brackets where TK would eventually win and go on to the grand finals and almost take it up against Evil Geniuses. But um, yeah, what a time. And um, well, hopefully we get more great moments like this in just a few days time. And tweeting your thoughts on all this in the comment section below. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy it, I'd greatly appreciate a like on the video. Really upside the YouTube icon. I know you enjoyed this content. A lot of people like you may enjoy this content as well. And I've grown the competitive Call of Duty community. Thank you as always. Take care. And I will see you next time. From the back, he drops out two players from the front. Three to with one. Is the trade going to come through? You have a touch there, but Kenny finds it up to Kenny with three. Kenny could get oh! Are you serious? Kenny picks up the quad kill in the hill. And now he's so close to streaks. Honestly, if you're Kenny, book it. Go to the other side of the map. I, you, you can just play for the free 100 points. How the hell does this guy have 18 kills already in this map? Oh, and with Kenny. that kill on the zoom, and now he's got the glide bomb to work with. Looking to play initial capture time on the upcoming dock screen hard point, but his teammate is there. His teammate is going to steal the points. Fortunately not. Kenny gets the cap points. Now inching ever so closer to those tier two and tier three score streaks. And put yourself in a corner. That's all you need to do. Play for the freest kill of your Call of Duty career. Is it going to come in the form of attach? Number one on the minimap, Kenny waiting. And this is a good corner to play. It's a great corner. Kenny still being so patient, but it's free time for TK. It's extending their lead as finally Kenny decides to push up towards midnight. Two plays to the right hand side. This is a massive win for him. Full streaks for Kenny. A double kill. The man is on a mission at 21 and 9. A 7 spree. An 8 spree for Kenny. Uh -oh. Super buddies as well, Kenny. You deserve it. It all started with a quad kill. A four piece inbounds. Oh the my god! Will not die. Zuma, don't peek him. Don't do it. Don't do it, Zuma. You're gonna die. It's double digit streak for Kenny. It's full streaks. And if he isn't careful, Revan, he's gonna overlap. Oh my god, nobody on FaZe Clan could stop Kenny at this moment in time. Him and Feral combined for a 15 kill spree. Now I'm starting to hear the oh. DK fans in the crowd get loud. 11 for Kenny before he drops, but the damage has been done. Now they're all